Greetings everyone. In this video lecture we are going to be talking about um, the difference between conductors and insulators. Now some of you may have uh, some sort of an idea about a difference between these two, um, but it'll be easier if we formalize it that way we know everybody's on the same page. Um, so if you would, uh, this is on, or this is in your packet right now, I believe it's page 10, uh, looking at the guided note sheet that goes along with this. Alright, so let's get started. Now, if you look at your guided note sheet, you'll notice that I gave you um, two different objects. Uh, one of them is an iron nail. Now, the iron nail we're going to say is our conductor. And there are some things that we know about conductors already. First, mo first, all, first of all, <laughs> conductors are objects that allow electrons to flow easily through them. We have already talked about that a little bit. Um, and generally, conductors are metallic. However, conductors can be uh, things like water, um, the human body is a good conductor, uh, things of the sort. All right? But if we look at this um, and we draw the arrangement of the charged particles in my conductor, it would look something like this. Um, where we would have positive charges or protons and negative charges or electrons. And there's something that you need to know about this, and that big thing is, is that in a conductor, the electrons are very loosely bound to the nucleus. They are free to move around from atom to atom. And we'll talk about why this is a little bit later on, but this is something you need to know. It's easy for electrons to move between one atom, possibly over here, to another atom, possibly over here, because they are so close, and it's very easy for those electrons to move around. Now, if we move on and we go to the second object, and our second object is a plastic rod, and if you remember, we said that plastic was an insulator. And insulators are objects that do not allow electrons to move through them very easily. It's difficult for electrons to move through insulators, and generally, uh, not electrons, but insulators uh, are non-metallic. So let me just go ahead and change that. Look, you didn't even notice it happened. It's all of a sudden it's new. Um, so generally our uh, insulators are non-metallic, so in this case we're going to be using plastic. And if you look at um, how the atomic shape has been drawn, or how I'm representing the atoms here, you'll notice that both the positive charge and the negative charge are very close to one another. Um, unlike in the conductor, where the negative charge is outside of the positive charge. Okay. That goes to show that the electrons are strongly bound to the nuclei or to the positively charged um, portion of the atom. Um, and it's very difficult for a negative charge that is in an insulator to move anywhere. So an electron here is probably not going to move all the way over here. And if it does, it's going to be very, very difficult for it to do it. Now, I, I just want you to kind of, I just kind of want to note this. This is a cross section. So we take an object and we kind of slice it. Um, so this is kind of looking at a flat in the middle um, and then obviously zooming, zooming, zooming in or making the atoms much, 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 much bigger. Um, and of course, there's going to be more than one positive and more than one negative. Um, but this is just kind of a rough sketch of what we're looking at. Okay. Now, if we continue to look, okay. Uh, charges in conductors differ from charges in insulators because the electrons are loosely bound to the nucleus and free to move around. Um, they're not bound to a single nucleus. However, the protons within an object are bound to one specific atom because protons don't move from object to object. Um, if I lose protons from an atom, remember, all of a sudden I have a completely different element. However, if I lose electrons, now I just have some sort of an ion. Um, in an insulator, electrons are strongly bound. Electrons are only free to move from one side of the nucleus to the other. They don't move between the atoms. They can only move from one side to the other. Um, and protons within an object are still bound to a specific atom. Now, the reason for this um, is based on the structure of the atoms. Um, I'm not sure if you remember this, but if you remember the orbitals, um, the s orbital, the p orbital, the d orbital, and you probably never talked about the f orbital. Um, but the s orbital and the p orbital and the d orbital are probably the ones that you talked about. Um, if you remember, the higher this number goes, the further away um, the electrons are from the nucleus of an atom. Um, and as you saw in your investigation, d 
distance, as you increase the distance the charges are apart, the smaller the interaction is between them. So if I increase the amount of distance between my positive charged protons and my negative charged electrons, then it's going to be much easier for my electrons to move around from atom to atom. Now, as you add in these other orbitals, the p orbital is even further out than the s orbital, and the d orbital is even further out than both of them. The d orbital is where most of the metals are. Okay, that's this is generally why metal objects are um, very good conductors. However, um, simple elements are not the only things that are very good conductors. Um, based on how molecules are shaped, um, that will go to show if something is going to be a good conductor or a good insulator, um, or if it's going to be one of the other two, um, a superconductor or a semiconductor. Now, um, this is something I already said. Um, conductors uh, electrons are loosely bound and free to move around. In an insulator, electrons are strongly bound. But this is just kind of it um, as a very formalized way of writing it down um, so you can see and have it and use it and study it and love it and cherish it. Okay, let's move on. All right. Now, if I have a balloon um, and I rub a balloon with a piece of fur, then what happens is, is this balloon picks up extra electrons. It takes electrons from um, the fur. So in the end, the balloon has a net negative charge and the fur would have a net positive charge. And we're just going to look at the balloon here and then we're going to bring our insulator. Okay, so if I have a net negative charge and my insulator, now notice that all of my electrons are tend to spend more time on the uh, side of the atom that is furthest away from the balloon. And this is because like charges, or negative charges and negative charges, repel each other. And these electrons are going to try to get as far away as possible. And this is as far away as they can get. They can't get any further away because they can't easily move from atom to atom. Now, if I look at my conductor, and I have my same balloon, and I have my neutral nail again, Notice how my electrons have moved all the way to the other side. They want to get as far away from this negative charge as possible. Negative charges don't like other negative charges, so they move very far away. So all my electrons that I had on all of my protons have shifted as far away as possible, generally creating a positive side and a negative side. And this creation of a positive side and a negative side is something called polarization where a temporary shift in electrons is creating poles of charge. Now, I would have a positive and a negative. If I remove this balloon from here, then these electrons will shift back to the proper atoms or the proper assortment. But as soon as I put a charge here, now all of a sudden I have a positive side and a negative side. So now, these two sides will attract to each other. Okay. Insulators can generally be weakly polarized as it's difficult for electrons to shift, but conductors can generally become strongly polarized. And by strongly polarized, I mean I have a definite positive and a definite negative. Weakly polarized is, eh, the right side's kind of positive, eh, the left side's kind of negative, but not so much. Okay? This is how, um, if I were to rub a balloon and it picks up extra negative charges, this is how a balloon will stick to a wall because now the wall has a net or has a polarized um, frame so it has one side that's kinda like a positive charge and one side that's kinda like a negative charge so the balloon will stick to the positive charge because positives and negatives like each other. Now this idea of polarization is one that we will continue to study and continue to look at so it's something that's extremely important to remember. Okay? It's a temporary shift in electrons that creates poles of charge, essentially giving an object a positive side and a negative side. Be sure that all of your notes are filled out, and we will continue to talk about this later on.